Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today on the bench is a Macintosh Performa 475 or otherwise known as the LC 475. The LC is the one that sold to the schools and the Performas were sold to home. I don't know exactly what the differences are but yeah so this one I've had for several years now and I'm just now getting around to it. Um, unfortunately, this one has had a bit of a rough time. Now, this case is extremely brittle. It's literally falling apart as I work with it. So, yeah, that's an issue by itself. But let's see what we got going on inside, because I do not know. I don't remember exactly. Okay, so... Yeah, that got me capped into the shins. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's done. Move you out of the way. A little bit dirty. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Oh, it's got the nice IBM hard drive. These are the ones that run for damn near forever and don't fail. At least, I've not had one fail yet. I'm sure there are others that have. Battery removed. Thank the Lord for that one. And it still has its original capacitors. So this board is all original. I can't remember which one's the video memory and which one's the main memory. It might be main. No, this might be video and this might be main. I don't recall. But anyway, so... The board seems to be intact. Everything seems to be intact here. It's got the manual inject floppy drive and it looks like it's just been shoved in there. I could have done that. I mean, I don't remember. It's been way too many years. But yeah, this thing is completely just is brittle. Got to be super careful with this. Yeah, see? It's all busted off. Um... Right, so hopefully it won't take much to get this thing going. With that said, though, Garth Beagle of the vintage computing community has been very gracious, and he actually donated me this replacement LC475 case. I haven't unpacked this sarcophagus yet, so I don't know what's actually in here, but... Yeah, he donated a case. So this one, this one should not be all busted up. At least I hope it's not. Um, but yeah, so I have a replacement case now to fix this particular machine. So now I want to actually get to tearing this thing apart and doing the usual stuff. So I need to get into this power supply too, because I don't know um, the condition of the circuitry inside and how bad the capacitor leakage is because these things are horrible for that at least the tdk versions are anyway i don't know about the aztec versions but i do want to get in there regardless and check out the low esr caps because it's the low esr caps that always present a problem so we got to get in there and figure that out and then we got to also recap this board now i could have sworn that I had another LC475 board that works, but I don't, I don't recall. I, I honestly do not. So we are going to just go ahead and tear this thing completely apart. Now, I will say that I did pick up an LC3 case that I was going to transfer the sticker over and just use this one. But the problem with this one is same problem it's got loose plastic busted plastic inside so these these cases are just see that it's just crumbling so this is going to go into the scrap bin as well unfortunately now luckily removing the parts out of these chassis is not that difficult so with this you just you know pull the um drive out like so hard to do this single-handedly but you know just saying definitely gonna have to clean that one out for sure separate these four clips and then out that one comes 
Not bad, not bad. Whether it survived shipping or not, I don't know. But, yeah. I don't want to save you. Because of this case is going away. So you're going to come out. And I'm pretty sure you got to remove this fan before you can remove this motherboard anyways. So you have to come out. Ugh, that needs a clean. Let's add it with the other fan. Actually, there's their different size fans. Interesting. Huh. Rotors are different. Eh, anyways. And then you have to come out like that. And then once again, we have a little retaining uh, thingus chingus down here. And then that comes out like so. And then we have another one right there. Yeah, I need both hands for that. And it lifts out like so. And that leaves the motherboard. So the motherboard, there's pegs here and here, but there's these little tabs. So you got to push those tabs back to get the motherboard out. So that's what we're going to do now is just pull those back like that. And then now it should slide forward just like that. And out it comes. Okay, so yeah, look at all that broken plastic falling out. Okay, um, it got crunch co twinkulated back here a little bit, but not not terrible. Um, I could actually keep this bottom cover, but I don't really need to keep crap I don't need, right? So you. I mean, if there's other ones busted up, I can use it, but I don't think, uh, eh, never mind. It's all broken right there. So yeah, you got to go into the trash can, set you out of the way there. And let's see, we have thy motherboard needs a bit of a clean, but otherwise not bad. Not bad at all. Um, caps are not showing any signs of leakage. I'm amazed. But, you know what we got to do, though? We have to change them out. A little bit of rust on there, but we can clean that up. Yeah, it's not bad. Motherboard's in excellent condition. Maybe they switched the capacitor formula by then. I don't know. But, they got to be replaced, so we're going to change all those. However... More importantly, we got to take a look at this power supply because this power supply is notorious for um, that kind of nonsense. So, take you, set that out of the way. Um, I'm trying to remember, I don't remember how to take the Aztecs apart. Strippity day. These are probably JIS screws, anyways. Which I don't have any JIS drivers. None. I just jam a different Phillips in there. Why? Because I don't know why. I can't be bothered, I guess. Oh, yeah, those are original Apple parts. All right. Now I gotta separate the two halves, which requires both hands. Alright, cover is now off. I don't see any reefers, which I didn't figure because this thing is a little more a little newer than that. Uh 27th week of 1994. I'm getting the same. Yeah, I'm getting the same there too. So what series are those? PL series. They're not PF at least. PF is a known leaker. I'm not seeing any visible leaks, but you know, you know as well as I do, shit's got to be taken care of. So we're going to need to take this power supply all the way apart and figure out 
Let's see, 1200. I think I have some of those. Pretty sure I do. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to get the right caps in here and get that stuff changed out because we can't let it go. Now, these, these do go bad, but they're extremely rare. I don't ever change these. The only time I ever change these is if it's something I'm going to put in active service use all the time and not, you know, maybe turn on once every three years. I'm not going to bother with that. But you do you. If I was doing this for a customer, I would probably change that. I've done it in the past. But since it's just mine, I don't really care. So just putting that out there as a disclaimer. But I will change these and I'll change that one for sure. Um, yeah. Looks like it's got a custom Aztec part in there too. You don't know what that actually is. Like a TDA 4605 or something. It's hard to say. But that's fun. Hopefully that never goes bad. Alright, so I have most of these caps in my stash. The low impedance, all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of these out with the exception of this one. Interestingly enough, they all appear to be the same value with the exception of like a couple. Now I have... I got a 100 microfarad. I got to look and see because I think I got some low impedance 100s. Let me double check that. Quite frankly, the most amazing thing I've seen so far is a power supply from, oh, 1994, and not a bit of leakage anywhere, nothing, not even, nothing, so it would have probably been fine, but I'm changing them anyways. And there we go, all done. So that power supply is complete now. All 1200 caps are in there, the 470... And then I didn't have any 120s, so I used 100s. It probably won't affect it that much. Worst comes to worst, I could probably use a 220 on that side, but we'll see. And then a new 47 down there. Now, these 47s have been in my stash forever. This one is from, like, 2008. It's been a long time, so... But they're probably fine. They're, they've never been used. Um, so... All right, uh, we can get this guy back together and then we can start taking a look at the logic board. So once again, I'm surprised. I decided to remove all of the logic board caps. Well, I still got two more I got to do, but I got all the rest of these off and not one of them are leaking or have the fish smell at all. I am amazed. So I, I don't know. I'm just kind of freaking out right now. So, yeah, um, but it's a good thing I'm changing them now before they really get bad. So, they're all going bye-bye. Every single one of them. And there we go. All new capacitors have been reinstalled. So, I got all the 47s in there now. And then the two 100s that are just kind of lone wolves out here in the corner. But, making sure I didn't miss any. Doesn't look like it. So, we're good. Took a bit of sandpaper and cleaned off the uh, shield a little bit. Got that rust spot off. You can see it's a little bit pitted, but it'll work fine. It'll do its job. It's not going to, corrosion's not going to spread or anything. So, okay. We appear to be good to go. So, at this point, I got to set this in the, the case with the power supply. But for now, I want to set that out of the way. Actually, I want to move you out of the way. And then, since I'm not using any more soldering at the point, set you over there and set you out of the way because what I got to do now is clean up this nasty fan because it's a bit on the uh, dirty side. All right, so this case needs a little bit of retro bright, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm not going to do anything with that at the moment. But the fan is now clean at least. Ish. So, okay. Let's pop this case open. See what kind of surprises we got laying inside. Because I don't even know. Try not to break the back cover. Okay. Good enough. Well, 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 it looks like it has a speaker and all that already in there. Oh, I see what happened to you. You got battery bombed. Huh. 
Alright. That's what happened to you. Oof. Not that big of a deal, but... Shame this machine was lost to a battery. Man. That's gotta suck. Lost to a battery. Take you out right now, because I don't need you at the moment. And besides, I can use you to fix other machines. Because this one is in better condition, so... Well, was. I just stabbed the crap out of the speaker. <laughs> Whoops! My bad. There. Good enough. Okay, the fan. Let's see, how clean or dirty is this fan? Not bad, but... I'm just going to do you right now. Actually, before I get carried away. See if I can't clean any of that rust up. Because it's kind of gross. Mm, clean it with IPA, which now looks like it's embedded into the plastic. Okay. Um, should I just... Maybe I should... Yeah, because I just noticed that the shield is missing. Um, okay. Let me wonder if I can grab the shield from the other one, which is right here. Yeah, this one's not much better. There's corrosion everywhere. Uh, decisions, decisions, decisions. Yeah, that's certainly that one's certainly in better condition. Six thirty ninety four, ten thirty one. So this one's a slightly newer machine, but not by much. Um, dang. Okay. This one's a uh, rubber is coming apart, but it's not a big deal. Um, well, I suppose I could. That didn't turn out too bad. I suppose I could take the shield off of this one. Mm. But it's got those heat stakes, and the thing is, those heat stakes will not. Yeah. What do I do? What do I do? I might, you know what? I might end up just leaving it because it's not like, who cares about the FCC regulations? <laughs> Hell with it. I mean, I'm not going for perfection right now anyways. Whatever. Actually, that fan won't even fit. No. No, it's the same size fan. Weird. Anyways, let's get the power, let's get the, um, motherboard in here. I don't want to go in, it's not playing nice. I think all right I need both hands all right well, let's see what happens turn you off here we go
Yay, chime. That is a, that is a damn good sign. All right. Let's see here. Let's grab the hard drive. See what it does. Again, there's no shield, so it's like, you know, what do you do? Okay. Will it even try? Oh, you know what? It may not, because it needs the PRAM battery. There it goes. That is a damn good sign. It's running. It's booting whatever OS is on that hard drive. These things, these these drives just go and go and go. If you're looking for a, a vintage 50-pin SCSI drive to try to keep the originality, get these. These just run. They run and run and run and run. But yeah, there we go. We're functional. A, a machine like this is actually deserving of a blue SCSI, in my opinion. Just saying might be worth looking into I don't know I'm kind of stickler for originality at the same time like oh yeah hear that perfect there we go um, I'm still debating on if I want to do the um, shield or not I haven't figured that out I got, I still got a, mm, such a pain because all the heat stakes are broken off and I'd have to break all of them off in order to put that shield on here, but there's no way to anchor it back down. So it's like, do I even waste the time or do I just reuse this, ex this existing case, even though it's got a broken standoff where the hard drive goes, it's functional still so hmm hmm well at least the, at least the top cover looks good oh you know what I didn't do hold on hold the phone oh boy you can see where the battery bond has done its damage Okay, well, I think what I'm going to have to do here, I might have to snap all these heat sticks. Yeah, I'm going to have to take the shield off the other lid that's completely destroyed, the one that's been smashed in. Take the shield off of that lid and put it on this one and just use like two-sided tape or something to hold it in maybe. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Oh, decisions, decisions. I'll figure it out. Alright, so I decided to save the shields. And this plastic is extremely brittle. Like, here's an example. I'll just... I'm throwing it in the trash anyway. So I figured I would just do it here. I mean, look at this. See that? It's just cracking like it's... It's, it's extremely brittle. It's literally falling apart. There's a piece of this that broke off. This broke off in the past. And it just broke again. You know, I can just hear it. So it's it's extremely brittle. Now, I did make an observation. So this replacement case, I took the corroded metal off. And the heat stakes were more like rubber consistency. It was still very soft. And that's what it's supposed to be. But these two, these two cases are basically made, you know, for the same machine. But one, there is a difference. There's a difference. The bad plastic says made in Singapore 
ABS FR. FR. This is a different ABS composition. It's like a blend. And I'm thinking it's these blends that are getting brittle. Because if we look at the good case, made in USA. So 1579A, just like this one. Foo Yu Manufacturing. So that didn't work out so well, obviously. But this one's still good. I don't know how to parse those. So anybody that's watching this video will have to do that on their own. Because I don't know. But this is 94. This one's... Who knows? Anyway, so the point is... The brittle plastic is of a different composition. And not made in USA. Where this one, which is a good one... Is actually yeah it's pliable still which is fascinating to me because they're both performa 475 machines actually that one that's the lc3 lid because I, I bought another case to try to fix it the first time around and it was too brittle so then i got this one from garth so uh yeah that's that that's kind of interesting to to learn about and that is how you know how brittle it is that's it all I did was just, yeah, it just blew apart. All right, so I couldn't let that go. I went ahead and moved the shield over. That was the whole point of tearing that all apart, is so I can get the shields out of the good cases and moved into this um, battery bomb case. So, not perfect because the heat stinks are gone, but it's it's in there now at least. And I also took this little heat gun tool right there and melted this finger push it back over because it was too far over it wasn't catching the board anymore holding the board in so that's now fixed um it's just a matter of getting all the parts back in here now yeah that certainly fits a lot better when there's a shield in there luckily so yes I did it again. I gotta, um, this has to wrap around the fan. Whoops. I gotta pull that back out. Or something like that. I forget exactly how that went. What in the world? Why is that not? Did I screw that up? Yeah. It's kind of slamming it down the side too much forget exactly how this is supposed to go but maybe it doesn't go in there like that I don't remember it's been way too long since I've worked on one of these but it's fine yeah see you can't And there we go. Everything's in place now. So I'm going to go through my um, junk bin and see if I can't find the uh, a SIM module for this as well. And also we got to service the floppy drive. Alright, so I went ahead and went in my stash to try to find a stick. Now I don't know if this one's going to work or what size it is. Um... It's in a bag that says 32. I'm hoping that's not like two 16s because that's going to suck. But I got that in there now. And then it deserved another upgrade, which I put in here. And it's this um, Ethernet card because, yeah, it needs an Ethernet card. So that's been installed. And these are getting hard to get and expensive now, unfortunately. But you can still get them. So this one I bought years ago when they were all over eBay dirt cheap. So I got that one, and then I got that, and the only thing left now is the floppy drive, and then hopefully everything will be good to go. Alright, so there's not really much going on with the floppy drive other than a little bit of surface dust, which I just blew off. Um, so at this point, I think I'm going to just clean up the old grease, and I want to clean up this worm drive. 
and re-grease all of that, clean the heads and all that. And I, I definitely want to peek in this eject motor because I'm curious if this has any of the same gears that the auto inject drives have that could be, you know, potentially causing a problem or oil or grease and stuff like that. So just, just routine maintenance is what we're going to do with this. So this appears to be a very heavily clipped together unit, so I'm not going to risk breaking it right now. I'll see how well it performs um, like that as it is. But there is a bunch of grease and stuff under there. I did clean all that up and replace the grease. I added, cleaned up and clean, added some grease there and on the drive gear. So hopefully that's good enough for this drive to function properly. Now there is a couple capacitors down here that I, uh, I don't, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so I'm going to leave that for now because eventually I got to get in here anyways. So I'm just going to leave it um so i think that's it for this drive i think at this point we can go ahead and start putting the computer back together and testing everything so this this just kind of like hooks in here um it's hard to get it exactly right there we go this hooks in there and then clamps down because there's the hook we do there the clip we do there and another hook we do here and a clip we do in the rear, which I gotta get it pushed up front a little bit, but yeah. All right, well, let's see if it likes this RAM. Floppy drive's back installed. And here we go. Didn't crash. Yep, it's working. All right, so now I can put this machine back together and get it set up in a position where I can actually um, do some stuff with it and get an OS installed on it. It's already got an OS on it, but um, it's going to be someone else's OS. So I'm going to wipe this drive and put my own stuff on it. And just a typical, typical. I'm going to leave the battery in there because these machines need a battery to work. Um, it doesn't have to, well, excuse me, it doesn't have to because you can flip the power switch off and back on again, but I don't want to do that. I'd rather just leave this Tataran in there and, and deal with it and just remember that it's in there so I can forget later. So we're firing it up now and it looks like it's got at ease on it, but it's got one icon missing, so it is disabled. But, yeah, we're all functioning now. I got my CD-ROM hooked up. I got everything that I need. Yeah, we know that. Wow, this is an interesting layout. Hmm. No, I've never fired this one up before, so this is all new to me. Holy crap, this thing is full of stuff. Um, let's see, what is this running? Yeah, seize all the RAM. Oh boy, yeah, this is... We're not running in 32-bit mode. So we need to fix that. First off. 32-bit addressing on. Virtual memory on. Hmm, I don't really need virtual memory. America Online, you know what, let's, let's run it. <laughs> Rip, okay, so that didn't work. Ooh, Tetris Color. I didn't know they made a color version. I guess they did. Alright, so let's see. Super Munchers. 
Ralph. Alrighty then. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing completely wiped off and we're going to do my own OS and all that stuff. So, cause I want to try to make this video a little bit short and not, you know, two hours long. So I think we're good. This one's someone's video list that they made. Aftershock. I'm not familiar. Oh, that was a good movie. That came out like 97. I think it was. Let's see. I don't know. Charlie's Angels was a de decent one. Clear and Present Danger. So someone must have messed uh, or, or made a list of their movies that they had at one time. See, there's a baseline font rendering issue in the uh, render. Interesting. Those early renderers must have been like that. Because I remember the Weather Star 4000 had a similar thing going on. Anyways. Peacemaker. The Siege. Now, I know the movie series Under Siege was Steven Seagal, but I don't know about that one. Anyways. This thing still does have the original system install. Wednesday, September 21st, 1994 is when this hard drive was last reformatted. So... It's kind of fascinating to me, and I think At Ease is installed on here too. Uh, Apple Extras, uh, yeah, At Ease. Well, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. All right, well, the insanity one must go through in order to reset this machine up again. So for some reason. This is not booting the Apple Legacy Recovery CD, so I had to go make a Disk Tools floppy, which contains System Software 8.0, which contains the CD-ROM driver, which allows me to mount the CD to run the... Yeah, it's fun. Alright, now that we got a fresh copy of System Software installed on this thing, I can actually, um... Yeah, be able to do something here. So I'm on the internet right now and I'm going to download all of the system 7.6 updates because I want to make sure this thing is fully updated. <laughs> and I say that in a funny way because it's not exactly, well, you get what I mean. But uh, yeah, so internet's working. That means the ethernet's working. I got the Apple Share server mounted, which... It's fine. Everything's all good there. Um, that's in the other room. But since it's going over the wireless bridge, I have to use it over TCP IP because I think EtherTalk uses multicast traffic and Wi-Fi filters out uh, multicast stuff. So, let's see. Open transport. We need... There's Apple Share 3.8.3. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, we need this. That's important. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go... Let's see. I need the open transport 1.3.1. We're gonna download you, which is gonna take... I don't know how many years to download. Waiting for data. The HTTP server's probably like, What is this? Oh, yeah. That's fast. Seven. Oh, there we go. Now we're going up to dial-up speeds. Actually, we're going faster than dial-up speeds. We're running at about DSL speeds now. That's actually impressive for a 680040 machine. Okay, you're done. And then, I don't know. Oh, it's going to use the other stuff at version. Mm, the one that came with the browser. Which is not the one I want to use. And then, let's see, we need Apple Shares 3.8.3. Actually, it's going to go to the garden. I don't need that. No. Oy, okay. That's fine. Anyways, I'm gonna get all this crap and get it downloaded.